Sade in the building. Yes, sir. Hello. 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 Welcome to the Lockout Men Podcast Show. Thank you very much for being here. I really do appreciate it. So before we get started, man, let's uh let's get a little background about yourself. You know, you're a female trucker, you're a TikToker. So what you used to do before uh before you got into trucking? So my last job before trucking, I worked for a mail order pharmacy called Express Good. Okay, okay, okay. So that so what as 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 an operator or something like that? How how do how how do that work? You, I mean, I know how mail orders work, but I mean, what people call you up for their orders or something like that, or the doctors yes. send you the prescriptions? Oh yeah, I could reach out to doctor's office, get a prescription, um, talk to patients, you know, get them over to a pharmacist you know, to them about their prescriptions a little bit, just give them the information that I can. But basically, we can just simplify it and say customer service. Okay, okay, okay. Did you have to, did you have to get some type, an accredited type deal to, to do this? Or you just happened to look up on Indeed or Google and you just say, hey, let me go ahead and try my hand at a mail order uh, job? So, no, I didn't have to have any type of certification, no degree. I actually was in the process of getting a degree to work in the pharmacy. I was, you know, working with my job. They offered tuition reimbursement. So that's mainly what I really wanted to do um, at that point in time. But then the pandemic hit, I felt like everybody went crazy. And it gave me a lot of time, you know, me going from working in the office to working at home to think about what I really wanted to do. And the pandemic made me or gave me an out. So, so how, how I do decided you, to do this. How, how do you feel? Um, how do you feel? Or how, how was the transition from working in the office, you know, being around your coworkers and everything, coming up to the watering hole and talk shop about what y'all watch the next day or the day <laughs> before to now going at home, sitting in front of the computer, doing zoom calls and, and yeah, how, how, how was, how was that a feel to you? Because some people liked it and a lot of people didn't. I can honestly say I appreciated it. At first it was hard. It was a hard adjustment because you could easily fall into the trap of not like bringing yourself together to get up and do the normal things that you would do if you were going to leave the home. But um, for me, I always try to make it a thing to always get up, wash my face, brush my teeth. I'd even get dressed as if I was going outside. And um, the real thing was just with the pandemic, I think it affected everybody. And I heard that effect through my patients. Um, but more so than anything, it gave me time to reflect within self. Um, it, I started not to like my job anymore because of the people that I were dealing with, the patient. And, um, you would hear things, you know, people would talk to you. Sometimes they're terminally ill. Sometimes they lost spouses, um, children because of the pandemic. But, you know, for me, it was just like, do I really want to stay doing this and then even get a degree in pharmacy or certification in pharmacy and then start to deal with some of those people even more or less, depending on where I ended up. Um, I just, for me, it was a blessing. I had to work. I had to work some things out. With he was in the middle of saying uh, about your feelings, about the whole pharmaceutical industry that it was getting to you to a point that you wanted to get out of it yeah very much so dealing with the people um you know just talking to certain people and their energy their energy you know dealing with being locked away in the house and i guess not having any reprieve for other people it was just like very taxing mentally but for me it was it was a great time for me when I wasn't working. Let's just say it like that. Okay. Okay. When I wasn't working, it was awesome. So you, so any kids? 
any any kids while you was working at uh working at home during the pandemic? No, no children. All right. So I guess with I, I guess with all that loneliness being in the house, working at home and you're not able to go nowhere, it pretty much kind of like like it, it's it's time for a change. Do you agree with me that a lot of a, a lot of the industries that the people were in that the pandemic had had opened their eyes to to the positions where they was at? Definitely. I definitely feel like it, that was the eye opener for me. Because like I said, number one thing, it gave me time to reflect and think about a lot of things going on. OK, that's what's up. That's what's up. All right. So. The pharmaceutical industry. uh mail order you talking on the phone where where the hell did trucking come in to come into play <laughs> well i i actually was interested in trucking years prior but just listening to outside influences kind of like steered me away from it because you know the number one thing was that i would hear from some family members well that's not for a single young woman. That's not for young ladies. And it's like, you know, I never wanted to hear that, but it was like, you know, just allowing that to consume my mind and hear them speak about, oh, we don't want to be worried about you out on the road by yourself. But during that pandemic, I was like, I'm just going to do what I want to do. And this is what I want to do. I want to try it. I want to have you know, some experience in it and just see if there's something I really want to do. All right. All right. So you said influences from your family members. It, it, you know, some influencers is right about uh, trucking. And then there's other influencers that just be like, yo, if I can do it, you can do it. Come on out here and, and do this, that, and the third. But as soon as you get out here, you'd be like, no, this isn't for me. (laughs) <laughs> but when did you but when did you realize at that point you said you wanted to come out here and at least try it? Uh I I wanna say the beginning of last year, like literally right after New Year. I um I just knew me being with my job was not gonna work. I didn't wanna continue working at my job. I wanted to move from where I was living. I just wanted to experience something different. And I did have both of those influences. I had a female older cousin who was saying, like, come out and do it. You'll love it. You know, it's awesome. But then, you know, mass majority of my family is like, no, it's not safe. Not for a young woman. But I, it definitely was the beginning of last year. Okay. Definitely just thinking about it. And I had a friend that I spoke to. And he just told me, I'll take you up under my wing. If you want to do it, just come out and I'll help you. I'll train you. Okay. Okay. So that, so this segue into the training. So you did, so during this training phase, this was before uh, February, before they changed the mandate for how you get your license. Now you was able to go out and train with your, you know, train with your friend and he got you kind of road ready or did you go out there and train with them and be like yo I still got to go to school so I he did offer to let me just get on the truck with him see what it's like see if it's something I really want to do but I'm this type of person I don't put my toe in I fully commit and it could be something I'm fully committing to something that's just not going to work out but I'm gonna figure it out along the way so I was like I'm not going to stick my toe in I'm gonna just fully commit I worked my job, I want to say, all the way up to my birthday last year. I quit. I stayed um, I stayed without working for a month. I took time off. I enjoyed myself for a whole month. And then June or July of last year, July 5th, I started classes to get my CDL. What school or what trucking company did you, did you go to to get your license? I went to Tampa Truck Driving School. Um, I believe the the main company is Tennessee Truck Driving. They have 
Tennessee truck driving, Tampa truck, truck driving, and I think they have Carolina, North Carolina or South Carolina truck driving. Okay. Um, and from there, they have um, companies finance your tuition. So I had a company finance my tuition, which was Stevens Transport based out of Mesquite, Texas. And since I finished my, you know, getting my CDL, my permit, my license, you know, did all my little exams, state exams or whatever, you know, driving test. Um, from there, they flew me out to Texas. And within two weeks, I had a trainer and I was training. Your experience, uh, your experience training with uh, Stevens Transport was a good one? It was. It was a very awesome experience. I had um, one trainer. Sometimes some people have multiple trainers depending upon what the trainers do themselves. Some of them are dedicated routes. Some of them are OTR. I had an OTR trainer, over-the-road um, trainer, and he took me from start to finish, and he was very thorough. He was very informative, and he was an awesome experience. Okay. Okay. That's what's up. That's what's up. Are you are you still with the company today? I am not with Stevens Transport anymore. Oh, no, I'm not. I gave them seven months. <laughs> seven months? I, I thought you were supposed to give them like at least a year. Seven months. What happened? I mean you had a Whoa. you had an awesome experience with the trainer. And of course Stevens, <laughs> you know, brought you out there. What happened? Okay, so it depends upon where you're coming from because a lot of people in my orientation class did have uh, employment agreement for a year at the least. But me, in my case, because of where I came from at Tampa Truck Driving School, my employment agreement was only for six months. So as long as I fulfilled those six months and I paid whatever balances I need to pay them back, everything was in the free and clear. So for me, I didn't have to do a year. I only did six months. Okay. Um, wait, my wait, turn- hold, <laughs> hold okay. on now. So okay. let me see if I'm hearing this straight. They, mm-hmm. they, they pay for your school, but they, Mm-hmm. But they took the money back out of your out of your paycheck to pay for the school. So they pay a portion. They pay a portion. They don't pay one hundred percent. Maybe. Well, no, not even maybe. They pay a portion. So while they're paying a greater portion than you are, you both are paying monthly to that school to reimburse them for that tuition. Um, I left after seven months with owing them just $400. So in my mind, honestly, it was a great trade-off. I'm only paying, I think it was, uh, $200 a month. Mm -hmm. And then I had that remaining $400 balance over those seven months. Um, I only paid a low end amount i paid i believe about 20 percent of that full tuition and stevens paid 80 so what happened why 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 did you decide to leave the company to be honest i didn't think i was getting the money that i couldn't so you know money motivates people all the time to say i don't think this is a great fit for me i need to get up and go that was my main factor. But then other things where um, I first started with um, a truck on my own, solo driver, always been a solo driver. Let's identify that. But my first truck was bad. It was like not a really good truck. I was always broken down on the side, like in a truck stop, waiting for repair or losing loads because there was something wrong with my truck. Um And it just gave me a lot of unnecessary time just sitting, not making the potential of what I could. So um, that was another thing. Um, And lastly, I would say I had a bit of an issue with some of the people in the office um, when it came down to, like, my e-log 
or my ELD. Um, that was a that was a big thing. They had me sit. I want to say for Christmas and New Year, and I was just sitting waiting for a load, and I couldn't get a load. And that was kind of like the straw that broke the camel's back. I I I I I feel you on that. That's that's the biggest thing is sitting, especially if you're a go getter type of person. And for you to be young yeah. and coming in with with that type of motivation, and then they sitting you, especially on holidays, like bro, like if you was gonna sit me, and I didn't choose to be out here, you, I could have been at home on a holiday, bro, like. Right. Come on now. That's that's crazy. Do you still do you still stay in Florida because your phone puts you in Florida? Um, I I don't have a place currently. Um, I do when I take home time, I do go to Florida to see my family and be close to home. But I'm I'm not really staying in one spot, honestly. So I'm one of those people that I'm starting out. This is my first year. I gave up my apartment. I gave up my car. And I'm basically living out of my truck, saving money. So if I decide to buy a place, it's really up to me wherever I go. Yeah, that's what's up. That's what's up. So, Stevens, set aside. Uh, where where are you at now? You, you, would, you don't have to name the company, but is it a smaller outfit or is it another med uh, mega carrier? Um, I would say they're um, a mega carrier, in my opinion, because they're bigger than Steven. Yeah. Okay. 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 But you basically went over there to see if you could make more money. Are Are you Are you good with uh with 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 the situation, or is it still a work in progress? I'm doing better. I'm definitely doing better than what I was at Steven. So I can't complain too much, but I know there's more and there's better. I'm just right now working on my experience, you know, because I know once you get that certain amount of experience, you cannot be denied. That's what's up. That's what's up. I, I, you know, I, I am enjoying myself with you right now because you, you, you you're not just out here saying, yo, I'm just trying to get the bag and I'm trying to do this and I'm trying to be an owner. No, you over here like, yo, I know what it's about. It's about my experience. Then that's what it was like with me back in the day. Like when I was with U.S. Express, it, I, I knew the money wasn't always tight, but I knew right. when I get my experience after after a couple of years, at first I was the one, you know, I was following in the footsteps of everybody that was saying, yo, just put in a year and you can get any job you want. But then when after that year passed and I started looking, you know, outside of the box, these other companies mm -hmm. looking for like two years, three years. And I'm like, wait, right. I'm like, wait, right. wait, I thought uh, I. How many years you got? I got I got my year. Everybody say get a year and I will be making no. I, I will be making this money. I will be making this cheddar. No. Mm -mm. Yeah, no. No. And that's exactly what I got going on. A lot of the jobs that I'm looking at and that I in that I really want, they at least want those two years. And that's uh, I gotta say, out here nine going on ten months this month, it's like I'm getting to that point where it's winding down that like, okay, I want to be closer to home, but then I have to always keep in the back of my mind, what do I want in the future? I got to sacrifice now for later. So it's like, yeah, a lot of the jobs that I look at and I really want that'll give me the pay that I want. They want that experience and yes. they want, they're not just open to you just bouncing around like how a lot of people think they're, you know, saying, oh, you know, you can go anywhere. It doesn't matter. You can, you know, you can stop here and go there. No, they want to know you got some type of loyalty. So, See, yeah. That's the problem that I have with these TikTok influencers, man. I, I That's my huge problem with them. Because they, they quick to tell you how happy, happy, joy, joy, uh, Ren and Skippy out here. 
but they're not being for real, for real of what what actually goes on out here. You know what I'm saying? There's there's lone mm-hmm. nights. There's loneliness in the truck. There's mental aspects, and you know, and mm-hmm. you like you're like, damn, I'm only ten months in. I only got. I only got two more months to go to be my first year. And then I got to go a whole nother 12, uh, 12 months, you know, to get, you know, to get where I want to be, you know, and it's, it's going to yeah. be, it's going to be a trying time for you though, for real. I mean, you know, you're going to come across, you're going to come across companies that's not going to do right by you. You're going to come across companies that's going to put you in positions, you know, positions or situations you know, so yeah, right now, like you said before, sacrifice now so you can get yourself together later. I'm I'm right here in Wisconsin. Speaking of which, where where are you in this part of the world? I'm currently in Texas. Oh, okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. Houston, Dallas, Laredo. I'm in. I I'm actually two hours north of Houston. Oh, okay. You must be in some butthole. <laughs> that's, that's what I call all. That's what I call all cities outside of Dallas, Austin, uh, Laredo, Houston. All the mother, all the mother small ass towns is like butthole Texas. That's what I call. Them. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I completely understand. Yeah. Definitely <laughs> there. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So. Look, look at here, uh, Sade, man. Um, I see you on TikTok. What, what, what was the reason why you decided to start uh, TikToking? I don't know. I got caught up in the wind of it because for the longest I was saying I'd never get on TikTok. That seems like, you know, what the little kids are on. But then one day I just got on TikTok and I'm like, oh, my God, it's a lot of people on TikTok, a lot of different things. Um, and you know, just making little videos, just sharing my experiences. First, um, I was selling Mary Kay. I was a Mary Kay lady selling, you know, Mary Kay products. But then, you know, I just started sharing just recently what I've been going through, um, doing trucking more so on my Instagram page, but you know, just started sharing what I'm going through. Okay. As a truck driver. Okay. Now, again, like I said, I I, I I meet interesting people from TikTok. I'm not a I'm not a fan of TikTok, and let me explain why. Like, I'm not a fan of TikTok. I, I'm not a fan of doing content on TikTok because it's like the way TikTok is set up, it's not exactly a content creator type app like YouTube. Now, me, I'm mm-hmm. I'm, I'm YouTube all the way. Content creator mm. on YouTube hits harder than content creator on TikTok because you only make like what a three minute video and basically is just you know voiceovers and TikTok dances. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So yeah. a lot of a lot of the female you know a lot of the females that I, you know meet on the app, you know they tell some interesting stories that that catch my interest and i i feel that you know what you guys is talking about is a good topic to you know chop it up with me in a, uh, as a as a meet and greet type of deal you know and that's why that's why i said one side of me don't like the app but the other side of me appreciate the app because of everybody that i have met and connected with so far so yeah, yeah. i i would give tiktok that and in particular Let's talk about let, let, let's talk about this Asian stuff, man. Uh, look, <laughs> me and you, I, I, I hate to say this, but I, I kind of think me and you is going to be on both sides of the tracks right here because I'd seen the initial video and the young lady mm-hmm. in the video was saying, yo, we need to stop messing with, you know, messing with the with the foreigners. We need to stop giving them the money and all like that. And I'm like. That's easier said than done because a lot of a lot of us black folks now, black folks now, black folks okay. now, a mm-hmm. lot of us black folks now don't like to get don't don't like to spend money with other black folks now. You know what I'm saying? They feel hey, that you're right. They, they feel that like I, I have I, I have a female friend 
that does nails, right? She she mm -hmm. she started up in Cleveland, but now she made she made her way down to Georgia and doing and doing fairly well. But when she started, mm -hmm. she had a <clears throat> a little a little storefront, a little storefront that was maybe about about a block and a half down from where the where the Chinese people was in the was in the plaza. So mm -hmm. she would get a, you know, she would get a few walk-ins that'd be like that, you know, they came from the plaza, but she'll get a few walk-ins and they'd be like, oh, okay, you know, can you do this? Can you do that? That this, that, and the third. Yeah, I can do that, no problem. When she tells them the price though, they get they get in their feelings and be like, Oh, well, the Asians down the street do it cheaper. You you see yeah. where I'm going with that? I do. I do. So I can appreciate you guys saying, you know, I can appreciate you guys saying when you go in there and y'all get into sticky situations and all like that. But it'd be the same people that be saying, OK, don't don't do this and don't do that will be the same people that 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 won't even go to their own and pay the price with the what they want. Debate right. me on that. Now. I honestly hear 100% what you're saying. Now, in that case, I can't speak to somebody's broke tendencies. I can't speak to somebody else's broke tendencies. Broke I know what I like. Yes, sir. And I know what I want. Okay, so I could pay top dollar with my sis who's going to give me a good experience. I'm not going to be stressed out, worrying about anything. I was never the person to worry about, oh, somebody's talking in their native tongue. I can't understand what they're saying. I don't really care. If I needed to know, learn the language. But you spend money on things that do nothing for you all the time. You'll spend money on things that make you no money all the time. What's wrong with you paying a little bit more to go to sis that look just like you and who could give you a better experience, give you exactly what you want, just like they do, mm. and just cutting down on other things that are unnecessary, don't do anything for you. Now, anybody can say the same thing about nails. What does that do for you? That does nothing for you. It makes me feel good. Mm. And that's what I like. It gives me a better presentation on how I feel. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So Now, for me, for me, it's all about service. Right. And I, mm -hmm. I agree. It, it's all, it, it all, for me, it all comes down to service. I'm not the one to come on and, uh, and social media, which I, I don't do social media all like that, but I don't <laughs> come on and, and be like, yo, this, that, and the third, and what we need to do and all like that. I don't do that. It comes down to service. If the right. service is poor, then I don't bring my money there no more. Period. You're in, and, and that's exactly, that's all there is to that because I deal with it a lot because I chose from that moment on, from my own experience at an Asian shop, I chose from that moment on, I'm no longer patronizing people outside of my community. That comes down to hair, that comes down to nails. Even when I want to go to beauty supply stores, I will go to the ends of the earth to try and find stores that are owned by people that look like me. And, and it's, it's hard. A, it, it's hard when you try to support your own. Now, th now, there's a flip side of that to what I just said. You know, I know exactly about, where you're going with uh, that. There's a flip side of that. You know, I there's a flip side of that. I I, I try my best to to support you. I will come in there. I won't even ask for no discounts. I'm not that I'm not that right. type of person. The money, the price that you want, the price is is what I'm gonna pay. If I don't want to pay right. that price, then I will I, go somewhere else. I'm not gonna sit in front right. of you like and they debate you and debate you on your price. Right. You know, I'm not gonna do that. You know, I was an entrepreneur, still am, but I was an entrepreneur, two successful stores in uh in the Cleveland area, you know, both of them CD shops. And mm -hmm. I had, you know, I, I, I had a number of people that would come in and, and and pay the price that I want. And then I got a handful of people that would come in and say, yo, bro, can I get this, that, and the third? 
You know, and right. sometimes depending on how I feel, I'd be like, oh, oh, all right, man. One time, one one time for your mind, man. But don't come in there and tell me, hey, the Arab down the street could give it to me two for ten. Uh, okay. 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 Go to the Arab down the street, sir. And then they'll go down to the Arab down the street talking about, oh, well, you know, lockout man, he he couldn't give me he he couldn't do he couldn't give me no discount. What kind of brother is that? I got a family to feed, bro. Rent to be yeah. paid. Right, right. You, you know? don't you don't go you don't go to Gucci, you don't go to uh Louis Vuitton and ask for a discount there. Sure. And Walmart. I'm not sure, right. You don't go and negotiate prices with them. So it's like just like you got mouths to feed, I have mouths to feed, I have bills to pay. And I, I now that I can't I can't even I can't relate. I can't relate to things like that because just like how you say Somebody quotes their price. If I feel like it's unreasonable, I'll just go somewhere else and I'll try and find someone else that's more reasonable. If I feel like the work and what you're saying you're offering me is good enough, I'm willing to pay that top dollar because I want top dollar service. I want top dollar experience. I just went and got my hair done from a woman who looks just like me. And the environment that she was in was not conducive to something that I want done when I'm coming to get my hair done. I paid her. I tipped her because her work was good. She was fast and she was sufficient. However, I pulled her aside. I said, you do great work. However, your work should reflect your environment. I'm not saying this to break you down. I'm not saying this to make you feel bad. But just being honest, you need a better environment. Your environment needs to reflect your work. Facts. And, and so you know, you know, you you is absolutely right. I mean, if they doing exceptional work, but you got to go into the hood, gun written and all like that, go upstairs behind the building and all like that. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. We 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 need to get you somewhere else, sis. Mm -hmm. Have you have you ever been? Have you? All right. So the story that you told in uh, on TikTok, you guys can go to her TikTok and listen to her story about what happened to her with the Asian. But when you started messing with you know with the sisters, have you had any? Have you had any issues like? Okay, this is the color that I want, but they gave you a different color and then trying to scam you out of your money. Have you have you had any uh issues like that happen to you? I haven't had women try and scam me when dealing with women like it of our own community, no. Um, but I can honestly say that I've had um women who don't value my time. And it's just like, just like you're somebody providing a service, you have a certain time length on your service, you want to be able to get to your next customer, or you want to get this done, I need you to get it done in a timely fashion. So if I show up at a certain time, I anticipate you being there on time. If I'm late, I'm sorry, I'll apologize. I'll even go the extra mile to pay a fee. If you don't even present a fee, I'm still going to give you something because I value your time. And I just ask for the same. Now, if there's something that I don't like, something I need corrected, um, I'll just ask. I haven't really had an issue with that. The only thing I have is, like, just just being respectful of time. Mm, I agree with you there. I used to, well, let's put it like this. So my shop, I had two of them. One was on St. Clair and the other one was on Euclid Avenue. On Euclid mm -hmm. Avenue, I was in this little plaza. Um, next door, it was empty, but it was a young man. I ain't going to say no names. He, <laughs> he, he, he opened up his, he opened up a barbershop next door. Now at first, at first the, the relationship was kind of rocky, but you know, I went next door, you know, I needed a haircut. I figured he, you know, he was in the same plaza as me. I'll give him some play and we'll go from there. Now in the beginning, in the beginning, all great. Mm -hmm. All great. Get in there, get my get my hair cut. Bam, bam, boom. Pay him. 
go back to, you know, go back to work. But when he moved out of the shop and he moved down the street, that's when the service was getting kind of janky. Now, mm -hmm. let me, I I still like the way he gave me my cut. I I, I like the cut. I didn't have no problem with the cut. That's I guess mm -hmm. that's why I still fuck with him for as long as I did. But it was to the point that let me get first chair, bruh, because He's the type of person that if you don't get first chair, you'll be in that motherfucking shop all day. Like, bro, oh, wow. I mean, he's like, when he get distracted, he fucking gets distracted. Like, he oh, had to no. talk, he, he had to talk shop with the people in the shop and he'll get phone calls. He had to turn the TV. So I agree with you, you know, about the about the time. Value my time, bruh. I right. ain't got time to be sitting in here all damn day. That's why I be like, right. right, like when he first opened, I'm the first person there. I'm like, yo, get me in the seat, get me out. Yeah. So it I... ca it it came to the point, it came to the head that my grandfather passed. And I needed an emergency cut that Saturday because my grandfather's funeral was that Saturday. And I needed an emergency oh, wow. cut. And I just, you know, I just came back in from where I was at. So he had a couple of people, you know, he had, I, I, he had about, a, he had two guys. And I, instead of going to the two guys, I respectfully came to him first. And I said, he was outside sweeping. I would never forget this day. He was outside sweeping, and I came to him. I pulled up. I say, let's call him Bob. I say, hey, Bob. I says, uh, today's my grandfather's funeral. I need a quick cut, man. I said, I know you I, I said, I know you got a couple of guys in there ahead of me. I said, is it all right that I go in there and, you know, ask them, is it all right that I get first chair right quick, you know, so I can, you know, make it to my grandfather's funeral? Mm -hmm. He said, yeah, yeah, go ahead. No problem. Whatever, whatever. All right, cool. So I go in there. I ask the guys. I say, hey, fellas. I was like, look, you know, my grandfather passed today's funeral and all like that. I just need it. I, you know, I just need, you know, Bob to, you know, to, to, to trim me up right quick. It ain't it ain't going to take long. You know, I don't do the design. I'm I'm you know, I'm I'm simple, you know, low haircut. Bam, bam, boom. Give me a crispy line up and I'm out. They was like, they said, cool. All right. So as soon as I got in the chair, here comes the issue. I mean, he was like taking his fucking sweet ass time. I'm looking at the time like, I ain't want to say nothing. You know, again, like I said, it, it was respectfully that he gave me the opportunity to get in the chair. And I, I still rock with that. But... Mm -hmm. It came to the point when he would start talking like, well, you know, you coming in here, you cutting in front of guys and, and this, that, and the third. And I was like, part, I mean, I was like, Bob, man, what's the problem? Well, you know, this, that, and the third. And he was just, he was just like, I don't know. I was like, I asked the fellas again that was in there. I said, fellas, is it all right, you know, that, that he could knock me out right quick. And the fellas was like, no, no problem. Go ahead, man. You know, you know, your, my condolences to you, yada, yada, yada. Here's this man that's supposed to give me the cut is giving me the most issues. Like, I said, I, I said, you know what, bruh? I said, you know what? That That's okay. I said, my, you know, I got up. I said, my bad. I did not mean no disrespect to you or your, I said, I, I looked at, you know, I, I, Faced it, everybody. I said, no disrespect to none of y'all in here. My bad. And I just said, Bob, you take, you have a nice day. And that was it, man. And so I agree with you on the time. And it reverts back to what I said about the service. The, yeah. the cut itself wasn't a problem, but yeah, after the service that he gave me, Nah, I'm I'm cool. I ain't gonna give you my service no more. And, and it's gonna be trial and error, just mm -hmm. like you would go to any other business. Because 
women cannot honestly tell me that you go to these Asian shops and you don't have trial all throughout your service because there's times where they nick you with their drills. There's times where they go too rough on your feet. You know, everybody's not like a uh, old girl who was on Mario. I mean, she needed that buzz drill. Everybody's not like that, you know. It, it, you know, there's child er- everywhere, everywhere. And you just have to find somebody who, like you said, respects your time, who will offer that great service every time and understand. Like, if you're having an off day, that's cool. But that's kind of weird to me that your clients say that's okay for me to jump ahead. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they're open to that. And, you know, you're saying it's fine, but apparently it's not. If it's not, speak up. It's just like you're being a patron in a business. Mm -hmm. You have to speak up for yourself as well. So that's just weird to me. Exactly, exactly. So uh, you left the Asians alone. Uh, mm-hmm. Again, like I said, I went back and watched the initial video. And I, you know, I guess I got like mixed feelings about it. Like, I think the young lady in the video, well, I got mixed feelings about all videos that that's like that. Because <laughs> it's always, it's they always trying to show the narrative at the part of intrigue you know instead Mm -hmm. of instead of turning on the camera from when it actually started (laughs) what led what led what led up to the 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 cop coming in there what what was the conversation between you and her before you turned on the camera so you can get your own narrative to so that you can get uh, a lot more engagement you know, yeah. and I, I, I just feel that that's how everybody do, you know, when the camera culture is out, that's what they do. They they trying to get right there at the point of entry instead of showing it at the beginning. That's why when I do my reactions, I like to see I before I, I like to see the whole video from the point from the point in and then to the point out. That's why I don't give too many reactions when it comes to like police videos and all like that because Mm -hmm. from whoever point of view we're going to see at that point but we're going to see the whole story when the body cam comes out you see what i'm saying well i i get what you're saying there but in all honesty even if we didn't see from start to finish my thing was just being someone who was in a in a predicament just like that you know when she decided that she wanted to call the police because the woman said, you know, she's not going to leave until she either takes the nail tips off or they finish the service, I don't think that's not reasonable. Because even if there was something beforehand that made the conversation go bad, as a business person, they're asking either finish the service or take off what you've done. You could not have her patronize your business anymore and just take the nail tips off and tell her, please just don't return. If whatever happened beforehand was not in the business's favor and they just felt like she was a bad customer, Mm -hmm. just like how somebody chooses not to patron a business anymore, businesses, I feel like, have and reserve the right to say, don't come back. You are not a pleasurable customer that we would want to invite back. And that's mm. well within their right. Now, in my instance, they wanted to call the police on me because I wouldn't give them money for a service I was not leaving with. Now, she just wants you to take them off. You could just take those off easily and have her leave. But you call the police and you know the state that we're in in this country where sometimes some police officers are not as, um, or don't use critical thinking nice. to say, okay, this is not, this doesn't really need me in here. I, I don't really need to be here. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I can only identify with that because I was in that position at one point in time where some, they tried to bully me and make me fearful of them calling the police. I had no reason to be fearful. It's not like I was running away, not paying for the service. I'm offering to pay you for the service if I had cash. I would have literally gave them cash and walked away, but I have my car. 
And I'm telling you what I'm willing to pay for. I'm willing to pay for the services that were rendered and that I'm leaving with, not what I'm, I've asked you to take off and I'm no longer leaving with. That's unrealistic. Where in America can you get a service done? You're not happy with it. You leave without it and the person still gets paid. The merchant is still paid. I don't know, but if somebody's in that business, I need to know because that's probably where they're making a killing at. But, you know, they they wanted to call the police because I wouldn't pay for a service I was leaving without. You and you, I had to sit there. You didn't get you you didn't get the service that you wanted either. So why would you pay right. for something that you didn't? Why they 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 did something that was totally different from what you actually want? Why you pay for it? No, you, no, that's not right. what you wanted. Right, and you know, but but unfortunately, there's a lot of patrons who still pay for what they don't want. They'll sit there, they'll take whatever treatment they get, they'll get the nails, mm -mm. they'll get the color that mm -mm. the person has put on, and some of those ladies will still leave with that service mm -mm. and pay for it. Mm -mm. And it's sad, but it's true. It's... And you'll do that at those nail shops, but you won't pay a little extra to go see sis, like I said, that mm -hmm. looks like you, mm -hmm. that'll give you better service and give you exactly what you look for. See, so, see me, it's about the steak. That steak ain't right. That food ain't cooked right. I'm not paying mm -hmm. for it. Right. Same thing. I'm, I'm going to flip it again. Just like tipping. You know how a lot of these uh, waitresses come on this app. TikTok. Oh, my God. They come on the <laughs> app, complain about, complain about not getting tipped and all like that. But I'm like mm -hmm. this, though. It's about it. It all comes back to the service. If you're not yeah. giving me no good service, you're not coming over here making sure that my 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 glass is refilled, making sure that I'm all right, making sure that, mm -hmm. you know, everything that you're supposed to be doing to earn that tip, then I'm going to tip you and I will tip you well. But if you're not doing nothing, if it takes you like 10, 15, 20 minutes, I'm halfway done with the food and I got to call you myself. No. Nah. I'm not going to tip I think you. that's reasonable. That's very reasonable. So this is the same thing with service. If if that steak ain't right, if that food ain't right, if that service ain't right, I'm not going to pay. I'm I'm, I'm not going to pay for service that's not right. You know, and mm -hmm. that's the same thing when for these people that be getting these, I don't know these these hood dudes the the fit song things. I'm the type of person like, look, I'm going to give you half now, half on delivery. And I will give you the other half on delivery if the job is done right. If right. the job ain't done right, then I'm going to give you what I feel that the job is worth. So it's all about service, man. It's all about yeah. service. It comes down into trucking, too. So, But that's a whole different story. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's a whole different story, man. Uh Sade, man, you um you you mentioned something more on your Instagram. Uh you 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 keeping your face clear? What you using some type of products to keep your your face uh face clean, like face masks or something like that? Tell me a little bit about that. Okay. Um, yeah, I, uh, I use Mary Kay products, Mary Kay facial products. Um, right now, uh, I have their, let me, actually, let me pull it out. I don't sell Mary Kay anymore. Let me just say that, but I can at least say what I'm using. So I have their facial cleansing brush. They have a great cleansing brush that once you charge it, it lasts for three months without needing to be recharged. Um, I use their cleanser, a serum, and a day and night moisturizer. And the line that I use is TimeWise Repair, if anybody's interested in that. You know, any of the ladies, if you're listening, it's a great set. It comes with a, I, my favorite is the nighttime moisturizer. I feel like it's awesome. Um, also, I use a 
line that's called Clear Proof. It's usually for acne prone skin, but particularly I'll use their acne treatment gel. So if I get a pimple, I just apply that. It's like a spot treatment for any type of pimple or bump, and it's literally gone within, I want to say, three days. Whatever pimple you may have, it'll be gone. Okay. Um, so that's what I use for my facial care, because even though out on the road, I want to still be looking and feeling good. How 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 is that possible, Sade, being a runner such, such as yourself? I mean, you know, we're... We're we're not at, we're we're not sh- we're not at the showers every day. So what is what is right. your what what is your routine? You you have some type of uh a little bucket going on? Yes, I do have a both ways where you can get in the shower, get to a a you know, a place where you could take a full shower, wash your face every day, but I do have something where I could heat water. I can use the water to, you know, wash my face, wash those hot spots, you know, and um, then drain that water in my bucket, you know. So, yeah, that's what I do. I make sure to keep water on reserve. If I go to a truck stop to take a shower, I'll take empty water bottles that I've drank water from and emptied them and filled them up with water from the tap. And just keep that on hand just so that I could brush my teeth and wash my face and right. even wash my hands from time to time if I can't get to somewhere where I can wash my hands. All right. All right. Sade. 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 Hey, make sure y'all get that. Make, make, make sure y'all get my favorite song. Smooth operator. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Sade, man, Love thank me. you very much for coming on in and uh, chopping it up with me. Sade, what, what what are you doing to beat these dudes off of you, man? Because I'm sure you, you know, with the with the nice facial, with the nails and the and and the and the upkeep and everything, man. What what you doing beating these dudes off the block, man? Oh, it's crazy, but I try not to make eye contact. <laughs> I just try not to make eye contact. Sometimes I'll just smile and I'll keep it moving. I'm working, doing what I need to do. I'll smile, say hi, whatever. But I just try and keep myself busy. And nine times out of ten, either I'm on the truck. If I'm not on the truck, I'll be getting off. I might go sit down at a bar, have something to eat or drink. But, um, yeah, we just. We just try not to make too much eye contact. That's all. How when <laughs> when when the eye contact is made, right, and the guys mm-hmm. do come up to you, and you tell them that they that that you're a truck driver. What what's they what's they uh, expression like? Oh, they're very um, they're very surprised. Um, of course, I meet guys while I'm out on the road, and they'll see. And the number one question is, where's your boyfriend? Is your boyfriend in the cab? That's the number one thing. Um, but then if I'm out and about and I just happen to meet a guy out, you know, they'll hear that and they'll be like, oh, wow, that's really interesting. You know, and they're amazed that you say you're by yourself and you're doing it alone. But, I mean, it's, it's just a lot of surprise. I know they don't anticipate seeing women like me um, who like to keep themselves up and look pretty, feel nice, you know, out there like that. But we're out here. There's plenty of women like me out here. All right, all right. So for now, for the safety aspect, I mean, if a dude do ask you, you know, if a boyfriend on the truck, go ahead and say yeah, you know, just just to be on the oh, safe side. Oh, definitely. Oh, he's oh yeah, yeah. he's sleep. He's in the back. Yeah. He's been driving all night. I'm just pumping gas, so we're gonna keep going, right? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's the that's to be on the safe side because you know I I talk to a lot of women and there's a lot of you guys out here, beautiful women out here that's doing the damn thing. But you know your safety is the number one concern out here in this industry right here for women. It is challenging. You know, not yeah. just for the job itself, but for the for the unwanted attention that some of these bums out here give you. So, you know, definitely yeah. stay safe and everything. Shad Day, again, thank you very much for coming on the Blockout Man podcast show. I do appreciate you coming on. You're very welcome, Mr. Martin.